Here we are on Ancestry.com, and today we're going to explore a gentle introduction to uh, European research. And so I mean gentle because if you're already familiar with Ancestry.com, we can leverage our familiarity with this platform to start searching in European records. And since we're familiar with the interface, it makes some of the other things such as language uh, barriers a little easier to approach because we're already confident with our Ancestry.com use. So today we're on the search page on Ancestry. And if you're not very familiar with the card catalog, um, you can interface with it uh, graphically. Um, so we can go down to this map and select Europe and then drill down to Finland. Today we're going to be focusing on vital records in Finland. And we're gonna be working specifically in baptism, select baptisms in 1657 to 1890. So you may ask yourself, why did we, why did we go in through the card catalog instead of starting from our tree? Well, as you take your research to the next level, you shift from being ancestor name driven to thinking about when did my ancestor live? Where did my ancestor live? Uh, what types of records might they have been included in? And then you go and you look to those geographic government, church, institutional um, newspapers, those types of records that your ancestor may have been included in because we stop relying on hints and start exploring the rich wealth of records that are available and that haven't been indexed yet or haven't been extracted yet. And there's a lot that's still online and then there's so much more when we opened ourselves up to researching offline. And so this is just the first step in, in that shift where we're now working in the card catalog, looking for record collections that our ancestors might have appeared in. So we're gonna go to Finland, select baptism, 1657 to 1890. My ancestor's name was Joanna, and she was in my tree, so Joanna Sophia Hagman, and so Ancestry populates that for me. Since this is a baptism record, I don't need any reference to her married names, just her birth name. <clears throat> I'm going to take out reference to her spouse, and then go back up and search. So on your search results page, you'll notice that you get a little shot of your tree. You get any documents that you've already attached to your person. And then on the left-hand side, you get uh, life facts from your person. That'll better help you be able to compare and contrast when you're looking at the actual results of your search. So I'm searching on the baptism database and the top record is actually my ancestor. And so we bring the results page up. And what we find is it's an extracted record. There's no image in this collection. So we have her name, her birth date, baptism date, place where she was baptized, reference to father and mother. Here we see a Family History Library film number, 55607. I always encourage you to get as close to an original as possible. So we're going to copy that number. And Family History Library tells us that that's Family Search. So here we are on the Family Search catalog page. And I went to Film and Fiche number. And there, our film number is entered in, and we can click search. Now, it's not 
as exciting right now. Here you can see um, that yes, th this is the record that was the original and here are the dates that would likely include my ancestor's record. And so I can click through on that. Up here in my extensions, I have Google Translate on my Chrome and I can select translate this page. It'll give us mostly English now. And so here we can scroll down and see that the film has been digitized, but it's only available to view at a family history center. So currently that's not an option with the COVID restrictions. So please, when you're working on your ancestors and you encounter this, put this on your to-do list in your research logs to make sure that when you have the opportunity to go back into a family history center, you can try to look at um, the original or a digitized original. So what can we do then um, during this time of restriction? We can go over to Family Search Wiki. And I've gone into fa Finland Church Records. And I can scroll down. And for baptisms, I can see this is available at Family Search. It notes that it's incomplete. This is the one that I'm looking at on Ancestry. And here's another one at My Heritage. I'm guessing it's going to be the same as the one at Family Search. So let's go over to Family Search and take a look at that. We're now um, Finland Baptism 1657 to 1890. In the description, though, it says only a few localities are included, and the time period varies by locality. So this is going to be a very lackluster database, incomplete. Um, you could put your ancestor's name in it and take a look. I'm not expecting much of anything here. So her birthplace. Okay. Okay, and then you can do a range of years. Um, we can enter in her father, Matt. Okay, and then we'll scroll down to search. <clears throat> so as I expected, there's no results in this database, but it's always good to be thorough and to record in your research log that there was nothing returned for this search. I expect the same thing to happen at my heritage. And so when I entered in Johanna Sophia Hagman, 1855, Kokola Vasa, Finland, uh, the same thing happened. I did not get her. And almost all of my retur returns were for this one location. So I'm guessing that it's a very specific record collection. So what can we do then? We can go and look for the parish that we found out about on the Ancestry. It said Kokola Parish. Let me go back and show that to you. And so I looked that up on the wiki. And this is an opportunity for you to do um, a little bit more, take your research to the next level as far as European research, and you can find other record collections to go and search for. These are going to be more so in the native language, and so then you can find research helps um, to make some of the easier. You just go to the research. Um, language on the family search wiki. I'm going to take us back to ancestry. And one thing that I encourage people to do when they do have these extracted records is to click on 
the blue links for the other people mentioned in the record. So we're going to see what happens now. We made her father the primary person. And so that makes sense. Um, it's just the reverse of the record. But we can take a look over here because we have another suggested record. And when we do that, it brings up another possibility for a sibling for Joanna. So this is someone else now that we need to research and try to determine if Paulus is a sibling, was born about five years before Joanna, same mother as mentioned, same film number. So this would be something, uh, another person to actively research. And so this is a, a, an easy way to tiptoe into European research based on our familiarity with Ancestry.com, um, Family Search, and Family Search Wiki. It's been great talking with you today. Have a great day.